Hi everyone, here's Abdul and today we have a comparison video um, One of two videos that will be released uh, this week and next week um, About rubber B bands um, Yeah, I had already last year I made a video about rubber B and how to install it uh, If you didn't watch this one, check it out uh, This one will concern itself to compare the two types of rubber B that I have I'll try to add a third one before the end of the summer or before the start of the summer and if I did I will um, make a video to compare the three types um, The two types that I have are uh, the rubber B. Both are from rubber B as you can see um, both are for my um, Explorer 2 uh, But they actually fit in my uh, day just as well so so the rubber B, uh, the number is for this one M106 and this one M103. So the main difference is, of course, uh, they're white and black. That's apparent, I guess. But the main difference is one has a buckle. So actually it doesn't have a buckle. You have to install this buckle on it. And the other one, you have this um, clasp, sorry, um, clasp and buckle. So when you have the clasp, you have to install the Rolex clasp that it gets with your watch. And the other one comes with the buckle, unsigned buckle. So let me first take a, a shot at the buckle. As you can see, you have two uh, rubber uh, uh, adjusters. So I have one that is fixed on the top and one is adjusted as you can see. So the buckle is brushed, has a bit of uh, it's stainless steel I guess, it doesn't have any kind of uh, uh, anything that says inox or whatever but I swam with it, I took it uh, uh, in water multiple times, nothing happened so I guess it's stainless steel. So the advantage here is that when you buy the strap, you only need spring bars. And I recommend to get spring bars like this. One, if you have drilled lugs, it's much easier to use. And it sits flush inside the case. And this part goes inside and makes it more secure. Especially if you're swimming or doing any activities, I do recommend getting these spring bars. So the advantage here is that you buy it and you just put it directly on the watch and whenever you Yeah, let's say let's let's say get thinner or get uh, uh, Your wrist gets more swollen for summer um, You can just adjust it on the go. So it's pretty easy to use um, self-explanatory um, and I recommend this one for the people who yeah, I would say don't like to do a lot of stuff with their, uh, like, have don't have so much uh, equipment or don't have the time to, to, yeah, set it up as much as the other ones. Or if you have multiple ones, if you have, like, a black, green, blue. So having this one, you won't have the ability to find uh, three, four buckles, or if you found them, they would be expensive. Uh, so that's that's who were the people I recommend using this type for. So by the way, recommending uh, if you're not subscribed until now, I think only 10% of the people who watch are subscribed. Thank you everyone for watching. And uh, if it's not a hassle, please just subscribe. And of course, if you like this content, like the video as well. Thanks again. So back to the topic. The white rubber bee, which is the one with uh, the, yeah, the buckle, the clasp, sorry, the clasp. And uh, yeah, the, the whole idea is that you will get the strap, the, the rubber bee, and you have to install this clasp on it. So even though uh, you bought uh, the, the rubber bee, you don't get a buckle with it, you get nothing. So that's the first thing you have to know, that you have to provide this clasp. You have to take it out of your watch or buy a, an OEM one or even a, a non-OEM part. Second thing is you have to know how big is your wrist because you have to adjust this rubber part and cut it 
to adjust it exactly as you would like. This part is very important not to damage the strap. What I did is, is I cut it very uh, carefully and then I installed it on the first adjuster here. So if I get bigger wrist, I would be able to move them across the micro adjustment here that I have. So I don't need to cut more of this strap. So I only cut, I think, two pieces of this. By the way, I'm wearing this steel dive. It's, to be honest, I wasn't expecting to enjoy it that much, but this full loom stuff is pretty cool, to be honest. Um, I think maybe the video of the first impressions will be up before this one, so check it out as well. Maybe I'll install the link at the end of this video. So, back to the topic again. And at the other end, so here you have one end, which is, let's say, this one. And then you have the other end, which is that one. So this end, usually you have like holes. <clears throat> here you get, you don't even get this extension. You have to take it out from your bracelet. And you put this extension to be able to have more flexibility in the strap. And then put the clasp on top of it. And then you will have this. So that's the main difference between the two of them. Let me put them on the, the, the watch and show you how they look on my wrist. Uh, so for that, I'll just pause and come back when I put them. Or actually, let me show you how I put them so you'll be able also to replicate the task. So basically what you do is, this part, you take it at the 12. So what you do is <clears throat> you put your spring bar, you get your watch, and you try to center um, a lot of people put like tape, like, like this. Like they tape this part. They tape also this part. So what you do is, you go like this. Um, no, the 12 o'clock here after taping it so you don't scratch your watch to be honest i don't tape that much i i scratch my watches a lot and um, the reason for that is i'm not <clears throat> uh, yeah my main collection i don't flip that much my main collection or, or at all to be honest my side collection is the watches that i do flip a lot and that actually worked quite well i might use it in the future so here we got the first part and then we put the second part just put it put the spring bar in the hole try to light it in and here we go voila let me take this out put this here oh as you can see did a mistake this one has to go inside. Oopsie. Here. Here we go. Here we go. This is the white rubber bee on the <coughs> on the Explorer. And by the way, the, the Explorer um, size, although it's uh, 39, 40 millimeters, there is the 36 actually works with this as well. So, this is a Datejust um, Turnograph, 36 millimeters, and has also drilled lugs. The difference here is that I would use the other spring bars just for, to get it out easier, yeah? Just for your <coughs> information. And as you can see, you put it here, <coughs> put it on the top, as you can see, you get it inside, you get the spring bar inside. Oh, maybe you have to. With the other spring bar, it actually works much better because it, it 
lays flush inside this hole. I just wanted to show you how it would look like on on this watch. Yeah, now it's fixed. As you can see. Alright? Yeah, now it's fixed. And put the second one, the spring bar, you put it and you insert the spring bar, the rubber, and Voila, oops, <coughs> comes out from the other side, just have to adjust and put it back inside. So here we go, now you see that it actually fits, um, although yeah, you can see that there is a gap when you just push it back, but still it works on it, so I just wanted to show you that it does work on even uh, uh, a Datejust 36 millimeters. It's made for the Explorer 2, but it works for this one as well. So here are both of them next to each other. And as you can see, this, for me, uh, both have their own advantages and disadvantages. This one I like uh, more because it's it gives you the, the, the diverse feeling, yeah? That it's just a, like a, a like a bracelet. It's nice. Um, this one is more easier, to be honest, to to change around and put around and go around with. So that's the difference between this one and that one. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions about rubber bees, watches, anything, leave them in the comments below. And of course, this is an invitation to like and subscribe. And hopefully, see you in the next one. Have a great one. Bye bye, everyone.